A viewer had asked, why is the difference in optical path length between two adjacent interfering rays in an airspace fabry pro resonator equal to 2d cosine of theta? It might seem like it should be 2d divided by cosine theta. The interference is happening between what I've labeled down here as ray 1, which comes into the interferometer, passes onto the second mirror, reflects off the back mirror, and comes back at the same angle theta, where it then recombines with a second ray, call it ray 2, and reflects, and then ray 1 and ray 2 proceed out the interferometer. And if there's a phase difference between the two rays at the point that they recombine, there will be a decrease in the intensity. It's an important question then, what is the difference in optical path length between ray 1 and ray 2? On first glance, it might seem to be this, but that's not it. That would be nice because it's just d over cos theta twice. And so 2d divided by cos theta would seem to be the difference in optical path length. What that overlooks is the fact that the incoming wavefront is also tilted. So the incoming wavefront, which is everywhere perpendicular to the rays, has to be tilted by the same angle theta. The wavefront is a surface of constant phase. So ray 1 and ray 2 have the same phase at these points. The bottom dot then is the starting point for accounting for the phase of ray 1. And then they recombine at the top dot. And if they're in phase at the top dot, then you have constructive interference coming out of the interferometer. The difference in optical path length is the combination of these two segments. And we can figure out what those are because you have the distance between the mirrors d and you have the angle theta. Clearly the top segment is d over cos theta. The bottom segment is a little bit shorter than that. What is it? The best thing to do is to imagine the two orange segments as two legs in a right triangle because there is a right angle down here. And when you look at it that way, I think it becomes evident that that first segment is d over cos theta, the hypotenuse, times cosine of the angle, cosine of 2 theta. And so the additional optical path length that ray 1 goes through before recombining with ray 2 is the sum of those two segments. Invoke the double angle formula, put it in for cosine of 2 theta, and simplify, and the d over cos thetas go away, and you're left with a difference in optical path length of 2d cos theta. So that is why the difference is 2 times d times cos theta. Now you might say it still doesn't make intuitive sense because as the angle of incidence becomes larger, it just doesn't add up in my head anyway that the optical path length would get smaller. But it actually does because this segment is getting smaller as the angle gets larger. But there's still a conceptual roadblock if you think about large angles, what happens as theta approaches 90 degrees? As theta gets past 80, 81, 82 degrees, it still seems that the additional path length is going to go to infinity as theta gets close to 90 degrees. After all, this segment right here is d over cos theta. That's, that blows up at theta equals 90 degrees. True, but theta can never be bigger than 45 degrees because when theta reaches 45 degrees, this bottom dot is right there at the second mirror. If theta is any larger than 45 degrees, the bottom dot there is beyond the second mirror and no constructive recombination can happen. So only with theta less than 45 degrees can be considered. So you never get to the point where the additional optical path length is becoming a singularity. Okay, that's the origin of delta OPL equal to 2D cos theta that I was asked about.